Welcome to the next video in the Search for Better Health topic. This video is going to be looking at syllabus.9.4.1, identify defense barriers to prevent entry of pathogens in humans, such as the skin, mucous membranes, cilia, chemical barriers, and other body secretions. So these all come under the first line of defense. So the first line of defense is made up of physical and chemical barriers that help to prevent all types of foreign agents from penetrating the outer layer of the body. So this is referred to as non-specific defense. So basically no specific pathogen is targeted. So it doesn't matter what type of pathogen is trying to get in the body through a number of different ways. These uh, defense mechanisms will try to stop it from getting in in the first place. So let's have a look at a few uh, of these different specific defense barriers. So firstly, we have the ear. So the earwax inhibits bacterial growth. So that sticky, waxy material that forms in our ears actually helps to stop bacteria from growing in our ear canals and obviously stops things from um, ear infections. Next, we have our eyes. So our eyes are cleansed constantly by our tears, which contain a chemical that also it helps to stop bacterial growth. So um, particular chemicals in our tears, obviously the flushing uh, mechanism keeps the eyes clean, but then the chemicals help to stop any bacteria from growing. Our nasal cavity contains hairs and mucus, which help to trap microorganisms, and that's why we sneeze quite regularly. And when we're sick, we blow our nose, and it's usually quite green and mucusy because um, it's trying to get rid of those pathogens that are trapped in that mucus. Our skin. So our skin is an impervious barrier. So it is a barrier that, if as long as it has no particular breakages, such as cuts and grazes and things, uh, pathogens simply cannot get in. Next we have our urethra. So our urethra is the, um, the tube, basically, that runs from our bladder to outside of our body. And it contains the urine. So the constant flow of urine helps to stop bacteria from growing within our urinary tract. That's why some people get urine retract infections if they don't go to the bathroom um, enough that bacteria growth happens and therefore um, a urine retract infection results. Next we have the anus. So again, there's a mucous membrane in the anus as well, which helps to trap microorganisms to stop them from getting in that way. The vagina. So in females, there is an acidic secretion which stops the growth of pathogens. Our stomach, so our stomach contains quite strong acidic juices that will help to kill many microorganisms. So a lot of the time, the food that we eat usually um, contains quite a few pathogens, whether it hasn't been cooked properly or it's been handled um, or you haven't washed your hands before you've eaten. And our stomach does a really good job of killing those microbes before they're able to reproduce and cause any problems. The next one is our trachea and our bronchi. So our windpipe and our bronchi that leads into our lungs also have quite a good mucus layer that also traps microorganisms. That's why when you get a tickle in your throat, you cough, and that coughing helps to bring um, those pathogens back out through your mouth. And lastly, our mouth cavity, our mucous membrane traps microorganisms, and the saliva, just like our tears, contains a chemical that helps to inhibit the growth of bacteria. So let's have a look at each of these um, in a little bit more detail, or the ones that we need to specifically know from the syllabus. So starting off with the skin. The skin is the tough outer layer of our body that is made up of keratin protein. So as we can see from this um, magnified image of the skin, we can see it's actually made up of lots of cells that are held really tightly together. And that holding, or that pattern that keeps those skin cells held together really tightly, obviously helps to prevent penetration from any type of microbe. The dryness of our skin also helps to prevent um, the growth of bacteria and other pathogens, which is why it's really important to make sure that after you have a shower, when you go to the bathroom, when you wash your hands, um, especially um, before you put on uh, socks, that you make sure your skin is really dry because otherwise it can help to harbour those bacteria and then they enjoy a moist environment and they will grow and reproduce. And lastly, the glands on our skin secrete an antibacterial and antifungal chemical. So we do have some microbes on our skin that are necessary, but these antimicrobial 
chemicals will help to kill those ones that we don't want. So pathogens can overcome the barrier of the skin by direct touch. So if you touch an infected area through um, abrasions, as I said earlier, cuts or openings or by active penetration. So if you cut yourself with a, nut, a dirty knife, you step on a dirty nail. That's why when these things happen, you need to make sure you go and get a tetanus shot in order to try to make sure that um, those pathogens are killed quickly. Uh, also infections by mites, hookworm, larvae, tetanus, chicken pox, cold sores, staphylococcus infections and ringworm can also overcome this barrier and cause symptoms of diseases. Next we have our mucous membranes. So our mucous membranes cover our digestive, respiratory, reproductive and urinary tracts. And what they do is they produce a thick, viscous mucus. So what we mean by the word viscous is things can't flow easily through them. So that means that the microbes get trapped and then the mucous membranes work together with the cilia and help to move them towards an opening, whether it's our mouth where we cough or our nose where we sneeze in order to get rid of those pathogens. A chemical called lysozymes help to break down the cell wall of some bacteria and then flush those pathogens trapped in the mucus. So lysozymes are those chemicals that we talked about earlier that are found in the saliva, in nasal secretions and our tears. They contain an antibody, we'll be going into antibodies in much more detail a little bit later, which prevents the attachment of viruses and bacteria to the, the surface of our mucous membrane. So it keeps them moving through our system. So pathogens overcome this barrier as some of the spores, uh, particular fungal spores, are resistant to heat and are resistant to the chemicals that are produced. So some diseases that um, can affect our mucous membranes include cholera, gonorrhea and influenza. Next we have our cilia. So cilia look like tiny little hairs but they're actually microtubules. So as we can see from this top picture here, they're actually little, they're like tiny little straws that are able to wave around um, because they're so fine. So they usually occur in large numbers on the surface of cells and they're used for what we call locomotion. So obviously locomotion means movement. So cilia are used for the movement of pathogens, as I said earlier, towards the mouth or towards the opening of the nose so we can get rid of them. They beat like oars, so they actually uh, move in waves and uh, so they'll force, um, sorry, the force moves at a right angle to the axis of the cilia. So the cilia work to sweep the mucus with trapped pathogens along the tract, and they're found in our upper respiratory system, such as our trachea and our bronchi, which prevent microbes from entering the lungs. Coughing, sneezing, or swallowing, as we've mentioned, helps to clear the tract of those pathogens. Next, we have our chemical barriers. So our body has several antimicrobial secretions that help to stop the entry or the growth of particular pathogens, such as those that we've already mentioned on our mucous membranes and skin secretions. So the stomach is also another one, which we've said secretes uh, gastric juices that contain hydrochloric acid and protein digestive, digesting enzymes. And our vagina, which has an acid mantle, which inhibits the growth of fungi and bacteria. Some other excretions, secretions sorry, include uh, the urine, which cleans and flushes the lower urinary tract. It is also sterile. So yes, you can drink your own urine if you're ever in a situation where you need to. Um, and lastly, the acidity of the urine inhibits bacterial growth. So bacteria can't handle an acidic environment. So our urine is slightly acidic, which stops the bacteria from growing in that particular area. And lastly, our sebaceous glands are found in our skin and they secrete fatty acids onto the surface of our skin, which helps to inhibit fungal and bacterial growth. And that brings us to the end of this video. So thank you for watching.